and uh, a warm welcome to uh, Steve, uh, who is taking the member spotlight today. Over to you, Steve. Hi, guys. Um, hi, Tracy. Thanks, first of all, for, uh, for inviting me to do this spotlight today. Um, if I could just share my screen, if that's sure. okay. I'll get the presentation up. Okay. Perfect. Okay, you see that okay? So, we can. yeah. So, uh, my name is Stephen Ogilvy. I'm a associate partner at um, PFPS, which is a, um, a senior partnership of St. James's Place Wealth Management. Um, just a bit about me. I, I had a lockdown baby a year ago. Aww. She was she was one uh, last week. Yeah, so uh, there she is. So, through, yeah. So, people can survive through, through these difficult times. Yeah, so we've got a lovely little baby daughter called Myla. So, she's so that was her going to the zoo the other day. Um, so just a bit about me, uh, about my background, uh, I used to be uh, an international cricketer for uh, Ireland and I've also played uh, minor counties cricket for Cheshire. Um, as you can see on here, this is me as, as a wicket keeper here, uh, playing for Ireland. But sort of my claim to fame is that I played against the West Indies cricket team in 1995. This is Brian Charles Lara here. And, and my son was able to find a scorecard from back in the day, if I could just expand that. So you can obviously see my name here is um, Mr. S. Ogilvy here. Oh, but if you, have, wow. if you have a look at the West Indies cricket team, you had people like Brian Lara, Richie Richardson, Jimmy Adams, Shindaran Chanderpool, Courtney Walsh, Ian Bishop. Um, so yeah, a lot of very uh, famous cricketers back in the day. So I was very privileged to play in a team along with them as, as, a, as, a, as a 19 year old. Okay. Um, I'm from. And you Chester. still play, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm still playing. Yeah. So yeah. my son's also playing. So I've sort of taken a back step. But um, I was captain of Chester Borton Hall Cr Cricket Club, um, 2013 and 2014. We won the league in 2013. But more importantly, in 2014, we were national club champions and we were on Sky Sports. So, um, so yeah. So that was a great day for the club. Brilliant. Um, um, my claim to fame, I don't know if people know about me again, if, I'm happy to have a one-to-one, -one, but I did play against Mr. Shane Warren, who played for Hampshire, um, and I hit, hit him for six. So that, that is my claim to fame, yeah. So um, my little lad here is called Freddie, and he is named after, as you see, the gentleman on the left, Freddie. Oh, sorry. So, so you can see there's a bit of a cricket background to, to, to me already. So a bit about me, St. James's Place. So again, after I finished my international cricket uh, and came over here to Chester, I thought I better do something um, uh, which is worthwhile. I can't keep playing cricket all my life. And um, so I was always interested in, in, in financial markets, uh, also investments. Um, so I was part, uh, I joined St. James's Place on their academy. Uh, I did six months training with them. So effectively a full year out, a full time becoming fully qualified as a financial advisor with them. So I'm part of the company called PFPS Wealth Management. Uh, and we're based just outside um, Chester between Saltney and Broughton Shopping Centre. So we've got about six uh, financial advisors there. We've got about two mortgage people. Uh, so if anyone needs mortgages, um, but again, we're here. We've got an admin team around about, uh, we've got 10 people here. Um, so if you need to find anything like pensions, any life insurance or any old policies that you've lost, or you've moved house and you, and you don't think that uh, any paperwork's going to your current house, yeah, please speak to us and we can help you find those pension policies or things like that. Um, again, cricket's my thing, but uh, I, I just recently signed up. Uh, Dean Voss, who's the Lancashire captain. So if anyone here is involved in cricket at all, or if you ever need any tickets for Lancashire games, yeah, please come and speak to me. If you need tickets for Test Match, I'm sure we can come to some arrangement with Dean. So, uh, he's a client with us and obviously here's He's using our logo on his bat. Um, just a, a bit about St. James's Place again. So uh, I just sort of spend some time explaining St. James's Place. I don't know if people were familiar with it. And again, people hear different things about St. James's Place, but I just want to go through it with you. Um, it's a FTSE 100 company, um, obviously just based for clients purely in the UK. We've got a market capitalization of about six, 5.6 billion. Um, but just to give you an idea, Royal Mail's got a market capitalization of around about 2 billion. So just give you wow, a, gosh. So just gives you an idea of the size of St. James's Place are. This is obviously slightly in 2019, but on here it says here we've got a, a, a 
billion of clients funds under management. So currently we've got 140 billion of clients funds under management. So if we're looking up after say someone's pension pot of maybe 100, 200,000, effectively in the UK alone, we're looking after 140 billion of clients funds. So again, we've got, got the support of Siren Sester, which is our head office. We've got 2000 people down there that it can help us. The nice thing I, um, as a financial advisor with St. James's Space is any advice that I give to any of the members uh, within the network um, is the advice is guaranteed advice. So even if people just just want to check that the, the current financial advice is fine or the current investments are doing well, then please come and have a chat to me because any advice that we give is guaranteed. So uh, at least if anything, you'll just check how your funds are performing against the current benchmark. I'm happy to help with that as again, free of service to the members. Um, people, a common thing I get all the time with St. James's Place is, oh, St. James's Place, you can only use the funds within St. James's Place. Um, I just want to sort of give you some reassurance that the funds that we do use, um, are, have, we do have access to the whole of the market. Okay. The reason I'm saying that is we use a company called Stanford Associates in Reddington. If you want to invest with them directly, you have to have 50 million effectively with them. So, oh. that, so a lot of my clients uh, uh, won't have that much money um, or not, not that level. But uh, if, for instance, they just want to put some money into a monthly contribution into a pension or an ISA, they, we, they get their expertise. So, so James's Place asked Stanford to access the whole of the, man the market and basically find who the best fund managers are. So um, as you can see on here, we've also got an independent guidance team here and experts. So this gentleman here uh, is basically CIO of the BBC Pension Fund. Um, and this gentleman over here to the right is also involved in the old Tesco's UK pension scheme as well. So we've got a fast variety of guidance and expertise. So the job uh, of the Stanford Associates is to access the whole of the market that you see, see here, gather intelligence and basically identify who the best fund managers are worldwide. The benefit of that is you can see here, um, the committee will decide who they think is the best fund managers, either in the UK market, North American markets, uh, global equities, yeah, or basically maybe who the best managers are with regards to um, pretty much into say gilts or bonds. We also look at who the best fund managers are with regards to leading in that. From that, we have around about 78 leading fund managers, okay. And then the nice thing about it from a client's perspective is once we have identified the, the fund managers, we can change the fund managers depending on if they're not performing or not. So you've got someone constantly looking after your money for you on a daily basis. So rather than me going, okay, today I'm going to select a fund manager that I think is going to make me money, we leave it to our experts within the James's Place panel to decide who they think are the global fund managers worldwide. So again, from that perspective, we do, even though we're restricted to what we use within the James's Place, we, the fund managers are basically selected from a, a worldwide panel effectively. Okay, um, these are sort of the areas that I specialize in. So again, we could talk around investments, uh, ICEs, uh, bonds, also unit trust plans. So again, if anyone's got any inheritance tax issues that they think maybe if, if their parents or grandparents were to pass away, um, that they might have a tax liability, please come and speak to me. We've got ways to, um, to help them basically protect that money so you're not potentially paying a 40% tax bill. Also, if people need life insurance or if any of the people here are business owners, directors of companies, we can help them basically set up life insurance through the company in a, in a tax efficient manner for them as well. And again, we also deal with mortgages as well and also cash savings. Um, going back to life insurance, again, we've got access to all the sort of leading um, providers out there. So we've got Bupa, Vitality, LNG. So again, the nice thing about St. James's Place, because they're on our panel, they tend to give us uh, rates at a discounted or at a discounted rate. So if anyone has any insurance or needs some insurance um, quotes, please come speak to me because we tend to get them at a discounted price than they would get online. Okay, so that would be And is that mainly life insurance, assurance? That so that life insurance, business assurance that people need um, stakeholder protection. Um, partnership protection, if people need income protection as well. So again, if you're so, especially if you're a sole a sole trader, please come and speak to me because again, um, your your number one wealth is yourself, and if you're not able to work, uh, it could have a massive impact not only in yourself but also in your family. So we can set up income protection for that. Again, we also offer critical in, uh, critical income, uh, sorry, uh, critical insurance as well. So critical illness. 
for instance, if someone was diagnosed with uh, maybe cancer or, or I had a, a heart attack, we can, we can cover them for those sort of events. Yeah. Um, everyone does, does think that they're invincible and they're not going to have these events, but please, um, the amount of clients that I've seen who have had events uh, and, they've, and they've had protection to the relief on the partner's um, uh, face, just want to say, yeah, we've had protection in place for them. Yeah, so please, it's really important because it, just don't take it for granted because I've seen so many people that haven't had that protection. Um, why investing? Just a, just a quick one on why investing. Okay, so um, investing is basically about a long term thing. Yeah, so again, you're looking for investing for at least a five year period. So this is a great example of why you invest the long term. I don't know if you can see this graph. So in 1987 here, I don't know if people remember the Black Monday event in 1987, but if you had 100,000 there, but if you have a look at the events over the years, and you can see here, um, despite, uh, we had the dot-com bubble back here, and then if you go on to this one over here, sorry, let's move that, you can see here, we had the Lehman Brothers collapse in 2008. Despite then, if you had a lot of safe, for instance, you had 800,000 here, and all of a sudden your money's dropped down, you would have panicked, yeah, but it, if you invested and you didn't need your money, if you left it for the long term, you see that over a, a four to five year period, the money's recovered over that period, okay? And so again, that's the blue line is stocks and shares. So you can see they do fluctuate, but over, over the long term, they do tend to increase, well, they, as you see here. Um, and this is a great example. So as recent as we had last year, we had the COVID outbreak, uh, when the markets dropped to back in March, you see here there was a pretty much a 30. Let me just do that. You can see here there's a 30% drop in the market back in March. History shows that even back in 2009, uh, again, March seemed to be an interesting year when the market seemed to drop. But if you look here in, in, in March in 2009, the market dropped 46%. You can see there that. Basically, three months recovery after that lowest point, the market grew 28%. And then they, uh, over a six month period, they went to 42%. And then one year, 65%. So the whole point is when the markets do drop, don't panic because um, people do see it as an opportunity. Yeah. And also with St. James's Place and how we invest, we diversify the portfolio. And I'll explain that to you a bit more. But if you have a look at that over a five year period, you know, that FTSE all share had a return of around 19% after the bottom point in that period. And now we're starting to see that sort of similar recovery, even though the markets dropped 33% uh, on the 23rd of March in 2020, now they're pretty much seeing a 20% growth this year. And they're seeing that re those similar returns. Here's another example of why you invest for the long term. And again, it's not about when you put your money in, it's about the length of the time you invest. This is quite a simple, you invest 100,000 over a 20 year period, and you invested in the FTSE All Share, which again is a relatively volatile high risk fund. If you just left it for for twenty years and did nothing, your hundred thousand would be worth two hundred and sixty seven thousand. Sometimes people try to get clever and they try to play the market and they go actually, um, there's COVID. There's going to be potentially uh, another lockdown with COVID, so I, I, I think the market might drop again. I'm going to take my money out because I'm, I'm worried. Yeah, if you miss the best ten days of the market over a twenty year period. Your money, your hundred thousand would be worth one hundred and forty-four thousand, as opposed to two six seven. If you missed the best forty days of the market over a twenty-year period, your hundred thousand would be only worth forty-eight thousand. So what we're quite simply saying is, when you're investing for the long term, just leave it. You will have ups and downs, but if you a diverse, uh, you put your money in a diversified portfolio and you use the best fund managers, you will get those returns. And this is but you're not saying on that, Steve, where you invest it, you leave it for those 20 years. It's then that but, active management, presumably. No, that's great. That, that, that's just basically effectively looking at the FTSE All Share, which is, again is a relatively high risk fund. So that's just that's just the facts from that. But again, if you invested in a managed portfolio, which I'll show you now, you, again, you could get even better returns. And okay. but, but I'm just effectively explaining that this is UK equities. Effectively, there is more good years than there are bad years. The worst year in the in the stock markets, yeah, in the UK equities, yeah, it was in the, is in 1974 when the markets dropped 50 to 40 percent. Okay, Gosh. guess guess what what happens to when people tend to take the um, 
when people panic and the market drops, what do they tend to do? They, they tend to take their money out, don't they? Yeah. But if you have a look over this side, the best year ever was 1975, the following year. So again, it's just a good example. There's Just remember there's more positive years than there are negative years. This is a good example again uh, of a client investing with us in a, in a managed portfolio. Um, the client just moved across to us, unfortunately, and the timing wasn't great. But this was in the 9th of March last year. And you can see here the funds pretty much dropped 10% over that period. Um, if Again, if you imagine that the market started dropping back in January, February, so it was dropping a bit more. Um, the client was worried. They wanted to take their money out then. And I said, no, please, this is a long term. You, um, you're not, you don't need this money for at least another five to 10 years. Let's leave it where it is. If you can see here, even as basically as little, yeah, as the 28th of May, yeah, we're looking at two months later, if that, the funds again back to 6.5%, as opposed to, yeah, the benchmark dropped at 2.7% and the FTSE 1.3. So again, I showed you before the FTSE performance, yeah. Again, this is the benefit of having a managed portfolio, okay. The returns are less, but also it's about the downside. The market, the, the funds didn't drop as much as opposed to the FTSE did at that period. Okay, and here's another great example. that This was the funds invested for a bit longer, 2018 with myself. If you just give you an example, of following the, if you want to follow the, the FTSE at that period, you see that even though the drop here, the funds with the managed funds at St. James's Place have done better over that period. So look at the, that period, 24.7% return as opposed to and the 0.4% return. But again, Tracy, this is again, if, if people have got investments either with Aviva, LNG, and they don't know where their monies are invested, I don't know how they're performing, please come and have a chat to them. We can do a benchmark test with them and see how their funds are performing against the portfolio. And again, this is just an example of some of the, our funds against, this one's against uh, someone who had an LNG ISO account. You see how much their funds dropped there. And some of the returns. And Steve, if we have people in the network that maybe have legacy corporate pensions, um, money purchase rather than final yeah. salary, I guess, or yeah. um, they've got a sort of mishmash of, well, I've got a bit of personal pension and I've got a little pot of this here and this there. What's what's your advice for people in that sort of situation as well? Yeah, so again, uh, as I mentioned before, we've got a team here around about 10 people in the office, okay, and we've got a dedicated team of around about four people that basically, if we get a letter of authority from you, so it's just, it's only for information purposes. Um, even if people don't know um, if they've got a, pre a pension previously, yeah, we can look at, so even look at the CV and say, well, who they, who they work for. Because again, if they've worked for someone, they will have an employer scheme somewhere mm -hmm. that will be set up. If they sign a letter of authority, we will do all the work for them. We'll help them to find the pension. Well, um, we had a client the other day, just a good example. They thought they had a pot of around about 30, 40,000. The lady in her sort of in her mid 50s, late, um, uh, coming up to her 60s, coming up to retirement. And she said, Oh, Steve, I think I might have about 60,000 somewhere. Yeah. Um, when we actually uh, looked into it, her, her portfolio was around about 350,000 when we, we accumulated all the pension pots together. The benefit then is we can look at how they're performing and um, we could do benchmark tests against it, but we can, can help them consolidate it and help them grow for the future as well. Okay, thank you. Um, and then just finally, just, just talk about, uh, so I'm actually lucky to be at a stage now where the St. James's Place portfolios have been going for a 10 year period now, okay? So you can see here, with, uh, depending on attitude to risk, you see how the markets have dropped over the 10 year period. But again, conservative funds, balanced, managed. Our managed funds are, is a medium risk funds. Okay, one, and a scale of one to five is, is around about a three. Even our adventurous funds are classified as a, as a four out of five. So, so James's Place don't deal with high, too, too high a risk funds, if you, if you understand. Here, the managed fund portfolio is growing at 96% return over a 10 year period. So again, and people always talk about St. James's Place saying the fees are very expensive or very high. Um, these are after the charges have been taken. Okay. So that's also reassuring, you know, that you're still getting a 96% return and that's after your, your charges are taken off. 
It's incredible that graph that, that even regard almost regardless of risk, the, the pattern is almost the same, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. So again, it's just a, again, the whole point of investing is the higher risk you can be, you know, you're investing for the longer term. Yeah, because the higher risk funds tend to drop more. If you understand. Yeah. Um, but also they've got a more chance of recovering better if you've got a longer term to invest. Sure. Okay. So, but again, you know, if you this is good, you're just comparing against the, the the benchmarks, they've all performed against the benchmarks. But again, this is interesting here is even the FTSE all share over the same period was a 71% growth. Yeah. And if you look at all our portfolios, apart from the conservative fund effectively, yeah, they've all performed pretty much there um, better than the, the FTSE all share. So again, we can help clients just put the portfolios together for them. But it, the big one is we, we, we ensure that they're, all the portfolios are stress tested. Okay. And again, so as I mentioned to you before, that this is something that we offer. Um, and it also just gives clients um, or any of the members within the network, if they just want to know how long their money would last. Okay, This is just a, a, an example of someone who had, who had a business and they, they reckon their, their business was valued around, let me just get my marker up again, sorry. So they reckoned that their their, prop, their their company, when they sold it in retirement at 67, was going to be around about 690,000. Okay, because a lot of people I speak to go, that's my retirement plan. Yeah. You know, I don't need a pension, Stephen. I'll sell my business and I can live off that. But I, when I'm saying to both people, why don't you do both? Because you can extract money out of your business in a, in a tax efficient manner and put it into your pension for yourself. This person left everything in their company. They did have some savings. You can see here around about 60 grand's worth of savings and also some pension. We also take into account that when they get to 67, their state pension will also kick in as well. You can see that little blue marker, okay? This client said that they, and again, this is this was their income because they were still working pre-retirement. You can see that they were on about 60 grand a year with regards to what they were bringing in. But they, they, when they retired, they wanted to have something similar. And they wanted to run about 4,000 a month. They wanted to live off. Yeah. So we did an analysis to show that if they sold the business, yeah, and then everything else, that effectively, if they were using four grand a month, it would potentially run out when they get to 93. Yeah. So sometimes it's a very good visual. You yeah, have to say, actually, maybe if, if I want maybe five grand a month or more, I might need to put more money in during this period here. Okay, so sometimes a very good visual again, 4,000 a month. Yeah, but again, if that client knew that, that they only spent 2,000 a month, they know that their money would never run out. Yeah, so sometimes it just helps them. Just to, and again, uh, something we can do for clients, we can take into account all their assets, we take into account inflation, okay, any, any pensions that they have, but also if their expenditure was 4,000 a month, how long that would last them. And then again, the other common one, okay, is again, oh, I like my money in the bank, Stephen. It's, it's I, I see it there all the time and it's safe and it's and it's there. It's nice. I like looking at everyone. If you left your money in the bank for a 10 year period again, and if you were lucky enough to get one of these rates here at 0.75, or if you held it for three years, you might get 1.14%. Um, the government's target inflation is looking at 2% per year. So even if you are getting any of these, yeah, you're still underperforming the inflation rate. So again, you're, you're losing money. So your 100,000 in 10 years time, effectively it could be worth it, effectively around about 90,000 over a 10 year period. So, because again, the price of milk and bread also, also increases as well. The other ones that are coming as people have premium bonds and they, a lot of people tend to, and invest premium bonds for their grandchildren. Yeah, premium bonds are great because it's a bit of fun element. It's tax free. You invest your money. It's also safe because it's with the good, the government. Um, but unfortunately, they lure you with that tip that you, you could potentially be a millionaire every month. Okay, the lottery, the national lottery, as they call it. Yeah. Um, but in reality, because it's linked to interest rates, um, the prize rate is around about one percent. So. The maximum you can put in is around, effectively around fifty thousand, um, so you're getting a one percent return on that. Okay, um, whereas as I showed you before, if you look at the, the managed portfolios, you're looking around about a six seven percent per return after charges per year. 
So again, please come and have a chat to me if you've got any of these, yeah, or any of the accounts and we can advise you on what's the best way to invest that money for you. Um, and then just finally, um, this is just pretty much a list um, of services that I offer. So again, as you mentioned before, Tracy, about the pension consolidation element, we can help people do that. If you've got people that own their own commercial buildings, properties, we can also help them um, to look to basically own their, their own building and they can put that into their own separate SaaS that we help them do that uh, in a tax efficient manner for them as well. Again, I think a no brainer from, a, from any of the members here in the, um, in the group that have got life insurance but, and they have their own company but they don't do the life insurance to the company, please come and speak to me because it's, it's a very tax efficient way to have a cover life insurance and the company pays for it. Um, and again, and again, we can set up things like junior ices for, for, for parents, grandparents, um, and we can set up, and also people have uh, trust, our ices as well, please come up and speak to me. But again, mentioned before, premium bonds, yeah, you're not going to get the same return um, as you were. Might as well put it on a horse. <laughs> again, that's higher risk, is it? yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, so that, that, that's me in it pretty much in a nutshell. Um, but thanks very much for giving me the time. And I, if you've got any questions at all, yeah, I'm happy to help. Brilliant. Thank you, Steve. So question, if you were to be giving your younger self one piece of advice, what might it be? Oh, very good question. Um, again, I, I think I think sometimes it's, it's again, it's, it's, um, I, I've always been one person that sort of jumps things in with haste. Yeah. And then look back and go, oh no, maybe I shouldn't have done that. I think sometimes just because uh, a lot of people give you information, yeah. So just sometimes just sit back, listen to, to every, listen to the advice, yeah. But just take what you think are the best bits, and um, yeah, and just don't rush into anything, yeah. I think that will be my advice. Um, because Very sometimes good. you regret doing stuff in haste. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And are you a reader or film? Enjoy your music. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I enjoy um, films. Um, but again, obviously, from my sporting background, I, I like watching sp uh, sports, effectively. Mm -hmm. It could be cricket, football, rugby, golf, yeah, any, any sporting events uh, I tend to like, yeah. And with two little kids, do you have much time for other, anything well, well, other than I've cricket? Got, I've got the young one, yeah, but again, I've got... Um, uh, I'm just a taxi service for the for um, <laughs> the other two, yeah. So they're they're also involved in sport as well. So it's it's just great from that perspective mm -hmm. that I can I can pass on some of my experience that I've done with them, yeah. And, I, and also keeps them out of mischief as well. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, okay, brilliant, Phil. Do you have any questions at all for Steve? Oh, you're on mute, sir. No, that was all very clear. Uh, yeah, clearly understood. I think uh, there is one sort of a misunderstanding of St. James's Place, which you touched on there, and that is that it's only for high net worth individuals. It's not. But there is a perception of that. Uh, you know, people think it's expensive, but as you said, take away the fees and the, the income, the net income is still is still very high, the net return. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. No. That's, yeah, again, because now, uh, just speaking to business owners, you know, again, uh, the common thing I, is, oh, uh, I don't have any wealth, Stephen. You no, know, uh, uh, you you waste your time speaking to me. But if you're paying a corporation tax bill, yeah, or an income tax bill, then you you're doing something right. So you know. So again, uh, just sit down, and have a chat to me, and again, we can look at ways um, that we can basically offset you know, uh, against corporation tax. And be it, again, just doing things like life insurance to the company, or or just making pension contributions. Because again, pension contributions are a tax efficient way because uh, the government has given you incentive to, to invest for the future. So take advantage of, of the tax, of, tax relief that they're offering. And Steve, I know this is probably a time bound offer. So people may be seeing this in six months, might not be quite so privy. Um, but do you want to talk through the very kind offer that you're um, putting forward for the July 2021 event? Yes. So, yeah, so, so again, um, to, to any members uh, within the group, but yeah, um, if you are concerned, I just had a, a spoke to a lady this morning and she was concerned that she didn't have enough money in retirement. Um, we can do a cash flow analysis for uh, again similar to the one I showed before. So, but also if you've got any um, uh, old pensions that you've got scattered around, come in and have a chat to me. We can help you consolidate that. 
put everything in one place for you, and then at least you know where you are, um, where you are now, but more importantly, where you want to be when you get to say state retirement age of 67, 68, or, or if you've invested wisely and you started younger, you started a lot younger, you could retire a lot earlier. You know, and you, the, because of the flexibilities within um, retirement now, you can retire at 55 or access your pension at 55. So, um, and it's the old adage, as they say, well, when was the best? When's the best time to plant a tree? You know, and, and the best time to plant a tree was 25, 30 years ago. Yeah. The second best time to plant a tree, um, if you haven't done so already, is now. Yeah. So how? So do it now. Yeah. And again, because if you leave it too late, because a lot of people tend to leave it when they're getting close to, to you know the 55, 60. Yeah, it's it's too late then to start looking at pension because you know give yourself that chance with with compound interest and cumulative growth. Uh, that snowball effect has a massive in, input in your future yeah so yeah happy to have a chat with people but also let them know uh, if there is a shortfall in their retirement um, and we can start put plans in place for them to, to help them achieve that super very good thank you sir okay so thank you thank you so uh, that's excellent right um so